wait. We should be in mass. I don't even want to do stats, Triv. I don't... Nobody wants to do stats. Stats is horrible. Stats is horrible. It's looking at the books. The book, the book's looking at us. Look, it's looking at us. It's... Will people even watch these? I mean, they might see the link and just ignore it and, and go because watch... Because stats. And watch, watch something else. Like, like our Doctor Who performance. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, awkward. Triv, it's recording. Oh, we should be oh, getting... Oh. Hello. Love stats. Stats is, is quite... Something, certainly. This book, AQA. This book, AQA, yeah, as always. You're gonna need a calculator. You are, it gets pretty bonkers. Now, like the beginning of most of our courses, a bit of a revision of GCSE. Yes. So let's go over that, let's switch sides. Alright. Now, first we're gonna start off with sampling. I'll divide this up. Okay. So, uh, there are three main types of sampling. What are they, Drew? Well, the first one, the first one of the book, is random. Random. The sampling is when you sort of choose a number of a population, there's different ways of doing that. A random is when you assign everyone a random number, or an A number, and then choose a random number with a calculator, random button. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how you get the people in your sample. You see that lots of times? Yep. Is it good? Yeah. There's another type, next one. And that's uh, systematic. Systematic, the next one. Oh, right. And that's maybe if you put everyone in like a register, in alphabetical order, and choose every tenth person, every fifth person, depending on your sample size. And that will give you all people you want in your sample. Essentially, you've got a system. Yeah. And that's what is stratified. It is. Stratified is probably the fairest of all of them. Here are like a really big sample, like the world. Stratified when you split people into male, female, maybe ages, maybe heights, and you choose a fair amount, a set amount from each each section of this. You choose like fifty girls, fifty boys, and that for your sample. Depending on how big your sample is. Yes, like it's it's impossible to get the world. That would be so hard to do a sample of that. They would. It's even hard to do a country, but your big, big populations try and take a big sample. Yeah, something you might so be mention. The bigger the sample, the more it represents the population. I think the lowest you can go is you have to have more than 30. You have to have more than 30. If it's below that, you might as well discard it. Yeah, because it, it won't be a fair representation of the uh, main population. So that's, that's pretty much sampling. That's pretty much sampling. So now we're data. We are, and ways to represent that. So, uh, firstly, yeah, start there. firstly, there's two types of data. Oh, there is, yes. I'll write it in blue. Okay, the first type is, oh, it's discrete, and the other one, which is continuous. They're quite different. The first one, discrete, what's best way to describe that one, Wayne? I suppose you could think of it as uh, it's an absolute value. Yeah. For example, if you go to a car park and count the amount of red cars that come in over a period of time, it might be six, it might be two hundred, I don't know how busy the car park is, but it, it will be, be a number. It might be like four and a half. Yeah, or like 6.8 cars or anything like that. No, you can't measure it any more accurately than car. Continuous is a bit different. It is a bit different. You say height? Height, we'll go with height. Height, like please. Height. You could say that Wayne's round up to two metres high. Yeah, I round up to about that. But or, I'm not that. He's, he's not that, that's, that's, that's quite high. If you've got a centimetres, about 170 millimetres, a lot more than that. And you can keep doing this. So you can keep getting more and more accurate, and that's what continuous is. Yeah. Take the data that changes. Yes. So these are the two types of data. Now, how do we express data is the next step to get on to. Oh, well, there's quite a few ways. Let's go over one of ones from GCC, and that's the stem and leaf diagram. It is. It now, is. You might have numbers down, or you will have numbers down the middle. Yeah, you'll have a column of numbers, and these will be a number that you'd be messing around yeah. with. And you might have two columns. It might be type A here, type A. and maybe type B at the other side, and this could be anything. Alright. Uh, now if we have a key, you have a key that's how that these work. Before I put values in. Basically, if you had a number here, like eight, be what it is, and then a number, it would mean 478. If you had a number next to it, it wouldn't mean 2847, it would be 
472. So what's that put mean? that there, it means that one of the values in type A is 478. You know, you've got comma, then there might be another one like that, it would be 472. Yeah. Likewise, down here is 489 and stuff like that, and so on. And what they say on the other side? What they say on the other side, but I have uh, Show a key again. 47 and, and then a 2. So a 2 here. That means 472, much like a like it does in the other opposite direction. Yeah, and that goes down, it's a good way to show when you have a lot of data that are quite close together. And that's stem and leaf you did do at GCSE. Yeah, you just need to be able to read it. Another one you did at GCSE, but it was a top end A star sort of question. Yeah, it was bar charts and moving on to histograms. Histograms. Which are a bit nasty. So if you have a, <coughs> I'll do it a all table. In blue. Alright, it swap sides? Yeah, alright. Alright, let's do it. You talk about what I'm doing and uh, I'll just go ahead and do it. Okay, so you have a table of frequency and length. Mm -hmm. Did you um, run around? Did it run around? Oh, then length, frequency, doesn't make more sense. And your lengths will be within a certain range, so greater than or equal to zero, less than five, and then the next one down would be greater than or equal to five, and less than ten. Like and you might have like eight to the first one, 400 to the second, probably not 400, maybe, maybe 12. It's a more reasonable number. So what numbers have you said for frequency? I think I said 8 and 12. 8 and 12? I might not have done. But these are completely made up. So yeah, but it, these are just numbers. Um, and then you could we'll draw only go to there, but it would go on more. It would go on more. And then you could draw a table of that. Yep. Put it up here. You could do a frequency against length. Yep, length across the bottom. Frequency at the side. And uh, uh, up to a length of 4, because it doesn't include 5. No. There's 8, so that might be no, not be a range. there. The 12 is higher, and that goes... From 5 to 9, because it doesn't include 10. And then it would go on and it, it might be less, it yeah. might be more. Wait, but the thing you call here is actually the interval. That is the interval, yes. Now, that's just a normal table. This isn't the next level, which is a bit histogram. To get that, you need something called the frequency density. I'm just going to put FD, but frequency density. And you work that out by uh, the frequency over the length, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And this, is, this is what your um, histogram will actually represent. I'm going to put interval so you can get used to using these words, but the interval in this case is length. Is length, so I'm yeah. going to put interval. But it could be anything, it could be, it could be height, like I said before. It could be age, it could be anything. Could be anything. Um, and when you've done frequency density from this table, you can do it from this, but I prefer to do it from a table so I can see what I'm doing. When you've got that, you can plot your histogram yeah. is frequency, frequency density. density against length. Where the actual size of the box would be, how much there is. I threw the ring on the ground. And it might look something, I'm trying to think. 8 over 4 is going to be about 2, or something like that. And then 12, and then 12 over uh, something, like, something like that. I don't know. Where the area represents the value. Yeah. And uh, that is from GCSE. You could look at that on Maths Watch GCSE and work out how to do that. Could do. You can look in the book. Um, but but that's, that's GCSE. And that's the first half of data. Yes, there is the second more. second half, there is more. Uh, we're going to need more room though, Tripp, so I think we should rub this off All right. and uh, we'll be back in a second. Alright, well, let's crack on. And now <laughs> we're on with uh, more data. Yeah, more data, and um, specifically, pi. Let's swap. Let's swap. So what we've got here is like looking at cars in a car park. There's uh, different coloured cars, red, black, silver, white, blue and other, and then the number of these cars yeah. that came in in a set time. And we're going to show this using a pie chart. Now this is revision from GCSE, this section. This, this is. part is all fine. So, first what step. Do? Well, first step, we need to find the amount of things we have in total. Yes, tot frequency. I'm going to put TF for total frequency. All right. And in this and case, that's 50. 50. Okay. Then the next step is to divide each of these values by 50 to give us percentage of the whole data. And that's point. Yeah, it's twelve percent. And then we need to times it by three hundred and sixty. Probably how many degrees it is, which is forty three point two, I think. Right. And you do that with every value, you do eleven by fifty, find out its percent, times the, that as a, a decimal by three hundred and sixty. And this will add up to three hundred and sixty degrees. Yeah. And then you you just draw You draw it and you have a set radius. At this stage, it doesn't matter how big the radius is. Not massively big, though, about three centimetres. Yeah, taking account how big your exam paper is. And then you draw them all on. Bit I'm just doing this randomly. Yeah. 
but that may be red and that might that one might be blue black because it's quite big and oh, oh yeah letter b s yeah. w b oh other oh that's completely random but yeah something like that yes but an a level it's a bit tricky isn't it there's, there's another level it's not hard there's another level it's another extra thing and it's pro proportional yes by chance. So, if you just draw this out, you've, you've made a pie chart with the radius R and you're going to make another pie chart that's going to be K times bigger. The radius of this new pie chart that's going to be bigger is going to be R times root K. You've got to remember this relationship. Yeah, we'll explain why that's important in a second. Swap sides. I'm going to get out my red pen. Oh, that's a good plan. So what we've done, we came back the next day to this yeah. car park we counted them again, except... It was a busier day. It was a much busier day. So instead of 50 cars in that day... There's actually 120. 120. Which is quite a lot. So you can see the proportional pie chart, this one's going to be bigger. Yeah. But how many times bigger? We'll try to find out K. How many times bigger? That's something to work out. So we divide 120 by 50. Gives us uh, 2.4. Yeah. So that would be K. This new pie chart will be 2.4 times bigger than the old one in area. And that's when we use this important thing here. So if we so draw this in, in red, if we, we said um, use a radius of roughly about three centimetres. So, so this new old radius times three, three times root 2.4. That's what I meant, sorry. And um, with these 120, we'd have, you'd have done it exactly the same, yeah, the same before. colours, but there'd be different frequencies. Yeah, you divide this by 120 and then it by 360. Yeah. So yeah. it's just the radius you've really got to calculate. In terms of calculating the angles, it's exactly the same as this, except it will be different values. Yeah. But that is proportional pie charts. That is proportional pie charts. That's oh, the no. end of data. That's the end of data. Now, now you're on to, to averages. Yep. Again, more a revision, but a little bit, a little bit extra. A little bit extra. Right, let's crack on. No. No. So, on average, no. 40 wanes could pass the camera no. in a minute. Averages. He's here. Okay. Averages. <laughs> a revision of oh, this chair. A revision of GCSE, mostly. You should recognise the next few words that are going from the board, and those are median and mode. These sort of measures of how you judge data, but what are they? Uh, well the mode, um, you think of as the most common value. So if yeah. you have oh, the most comes up most, you have something like series numbers one, like one, one, two, 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 three, four, four. The mode would be two because that's what comes, comes up the most. most, and that's not a very good way of judging data. It's not very good at all. No. no, it doesn't really represent the population at all. It doesn't, doesn't do much. It's not very good. It's pretty no. rubbish. It's pretty rubbish. You might have to say that if you're given a choice, which one you should choose. Never choose the mode. Never choose the mode. It's not. It's not good. Okay. And then we have median, which has a few up points. It's the middle value, isn't it? Yeah, the one that's right in the centre. So in this case, you take. Those two, those two, those two, those two. It would be two. It'd be two as well. But the good thing about this one is it gets rid of anomalous data at the sides. Yes. So if we have something like heights of people. Yeah. And I'm just going to make up some numbers, but so it's like 5.7 is a really small person. I don't know what it's measured in. And it goes up to like 11.2 and 12.4. And then the there's, you measure a giant and this was like 25.6. The median would take away these small and extra large values. It would, and they give you the one in the middle, which is what we could call an average. But normally, when you say the average, people think of something called the mean. It's quite even and nasty, and it takes all the data. It does. It takes all the data. And basically, it gives you the middle value, but with all of the data. With all the data. There's two equations you use. The yep. first one you should know from GCSE. That's when you have all of the numbers, you add them all up, and divide them by how many numbers there are. So, now we're at A-level, we have a special language. That is sigma of x, which are all the values, divided by n, which is the total number of values that there are. So in this case, it would be 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4, divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, and that would give us our mean. I'm not sure what it would be. I don't, I don't remember working out, to be honest, but I was no. just showing you what to do. This should be revision. You should know this. Also, you should know from GCSE, if you have a table... Oh yes, swap sides. Do red. Red's a good idea, there's lots of green there. We have something like the, int the interval here. 
frequency. Yeah, so it's frequency. You want something called the cumulative frequency. Uh, it is a GCSE idea, but a higher GCSE idea, but you don't able A level, so you should know that. Cumulative frequency is sort of a running total of how far you've got. I'm not actually going to put any values on this side. But if we had this like as a thing, six. the first one would be one. Oh, I'll do it like that, yeah. And then the second one would be two in the frequency thing, or one in the frequency one. But cumulative frequency, you go one, two, four, six, like that. Yes. And then what you do for working out the mean, as, and, and this should be another, another revision from GCSE, you do sigma f of x, which is the sum of f times x yeah. divided by n. Which makes sense, because that's how many times, the frequency is how many times it turns up. So it pretty much the same as this. At GCSE you'd have done this where you actually make your own next column, and you do the midpoint of these, between these two values, the midpoint. Yeah. You do that times that, well, the sum of that times that, and divide by the total number that there are. But you'll have done that at GCSE, but that's how we write it now at A level. Sigma f of x over n. Yeah. And that's the mean. That is the mean. Uh, I think the next thing we're going to go on to is um, actually not to do with the mean. We're going on to stuff like percentiles. Oh, yes. And um, then we'll bring some of these ideas together with that. Yeah, we're going to go on to stuff more about range and yeah. spread. Interquartile range. Toast. Hello? 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 Oh. The cookies. Out of Out range. Of range. <sighs> We're on to ranges now. We are on to ranges. Um, ranges, you should be counted at GCC as well. The difference between your spread of data, so we'll see how much data you have and what the main spread is. Yes. Yeah? So we have the interquartile range. Yeah. If we if we if we draw a, a graph, oh, blue, very nice. I like it. The cumulative frequency we've just discussed is where you add the frequency up, and that would go up the side. It would. Cumulative frequency, or just CF. Could have done that. Should have done that. And along the bottom would be something like height. We're gonna oh, we'll go with height. We'll go with height. It could be length of time or something, but height. Could be. And you might. And then, and then you'll get you'll get points like what we did before here. We had a table. Yeah, we'll have your plot, and it might look yeah. something like that. Might do. Then we have something called percentiles. Yeah, this is where we split the data up. So, if this is a sixty percentile, a percentile of sixty would be where sixty percent of the data will be within that percentile. So you yeah. find 60% like that. And 60% of the data will lie within this 60 percentile. Which is what we do with the interquartile range. Yeah. We have the upper quartile. We'll swap. Let's swap that in. And the lower quartile. quartile. And mm -hmm. using these we find the interquartile. Yes. So let's make this graph quite simple and say that the, the maximum height we get to is 100. Okay. That makes it quite easy for us to calculate what yeah. the upper quartile, quartile and the lower quartile is. A quartile is divided by 4, so yeah. the lower quartile is 25%, which would be 25 it in would. this example. And there's quite a nice thing to do. The other quartile is 75%. This line I drew before I said was 60, we'll now pretend it's 75. Yeah. Because I've already drawn it. So we have these two things, and then to get our interquartile range, we take the lower quartile from the upper quartile. Upper quartile minus lower quartile. So you'll see, this is in this is in quarters, but the values you get down here isn't, and that's why it's really good, again, getting rid of the anonymous data at the ends yeah. and focusing it on the middle. So we've got. This, well is, this, is now, like this. this is now our interquartile range. You can see most of the good values essentially will be in this range. That's what this is for. Yeah. So if we make up some values, we'll say when that is 75, this is something like 8, <laughs> and this is something like 6. Okay. So the interquartile range would be 2, upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Yeah. Now there's different ways of then expressing this 
And uh, the box and whisker diagram is the one that comes up in exams. Yeah, I mean, you did this one on GCC as well. Yes, you did. So, uh, like yeah. this whole chapter is pretty much revision. It is entire revision. So, uh, yeah, let's go on to draw one of those. It doesn't incorporate what we did before. Do you reckon we could fit it there? I, I reckon we might be able to. Okay, let's try. Stay it. green. Oh, All right, stay green. Yeah. yeah, green. I like green. Green skewed. So, we have this box. Yeah. And it has whiskers on it. It does side. have whiskers. So there's a whisker here. And there's a whisker here. And in the middle there's a random line. There's a random line. Well, not so, so random. random. Let's get blue. Alright, and, and, and let's annotate it. Okay. So what's this, true? Well, that's the lowest value that appears. The lowest value. And at the other end, as you might have guessed, it's the highest value that appears. Swap so again. Let's move transition. So that would be this at the top of this graph. And this right at the bottom. This right at the bottom. Which isn't always zero. Sometimes it can go like this. Yeah, sometimes it might be just... Like you wouldn't measure something with zero height. It doesn't make any sense. No. But that's your lowest value and your highest value. Then we have these two sides. These would be our lower and upper quartiles. Upper quartile. Lower quartile. So what's this random line in the middle? Is it the mean? No. Oh, no. The median. Some people think it's the mean. Ah. It's the median, you see. Which is the very middle value. Why it's in the middle. And then this is the interquartile range. From here to here, this box. The, the entire thing. All the data within here. The interquartile range. Yeah, And that's just a way of expressing what we do here. And you can see how much of the interquartile range is near the median, and hence is the sample very good. Because if, if this box is over here, then the median isn't actually in the box. Then, then that implies it's not a very good sample, and it's no. got a lot of anonymous data that isn't very good. And you should probably do it again. Yeah. And this is all familiar with GCSE, you should know this. Rarely comes up in exam papers. Yeah, they normally just sort of skip over this stuff, but it's, it's, it's a shared knowledge, it. so you could be asked. So uh, that actually sums up chapter one, because it's entirely revision. Yeah, and we're not going to do any past paper questions, because... The stuff that's important will be incorporated later. Yes. So let's move straight on. Sum it up. All right. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Stats. Stats. Unit one. Mm. Not fantastic unit. Pretty much just all revision. It, it's pretty horrendous. Yeah. It's so the old stuff we've done there. Apart from the proportional pie charts, is assumed knowledge. You're supposed yeah, to know that. Yeah. You actually know that already. It's just in the book, just because it's referenced later on, really. And it's all on the Maths Watch discs and apps and whatever. Yeah, so you, you can, can check you can out, learn yeah. that pretty quickly. Uh, yeah. One thing I will say... Oh, end time. You will need a calculator like this. You will need a graphic yeah. calculator for Later on, stats. It is very important. important. You can do it without. But it will take so long. Yeah, you haven't got much time in the stats exam. It is, they're all very long questions. You'll More see when we get on to stuff. Um, what sort of stuff am I thinking here? Um, Least squares, regression lines. Yeah, it's doing the rank coefficient stuff. But yeah, when we, when we get onto that, it's, it's later chapters, but, but you need this. Yeah, it is, it is really, really helpful. So get one of these if you don't have one already. Well, it's draws graphs. It's helpful for core two as well, to check yeah. your work if, you, if you're unsure. <coughs> but uh, just get one of them. Yeah, so um, in, in this we did uh, all the stuff we did before. Yeah, the different types of sampling, yeah, which you didn't so much touch on at GCSE, um, the random, the stratified, the systematic sampling. Yeah, refresher knowledge on um, types of diagrams, yeah. and, and you can use discrete frequency. and continuous data. Yeah, cars and height. Yeah, it's the typical example. Yeah. Um, it was all revision GCSE, all revision and then high charts and stuff. Box and whisker diagrams, yeah. cumulative frequency. It's not very exciting. No. Um, yeah. That pretty much sums up this video. It's not a very exciting it's chapter. It's not a very exciting chapter. Didn't even need a video. It's, it should, you should know it. So. Yeah. But just in case. We did it. We did. Sort of lowering myself slowly into the, the vast abyss that is statistics. I hate statistics. And it's, it's not that friendly. Next year, I'll be doing mechanics, which is much more friendly. Hooray! Love mechanics. Mechanics is nice, but until then... we have to painfully go through stats. Yeah, so, uh, should we wade on? Or oh, wade on. Oh, let's do it. Stats is mean. 